you know what? When you're sitting in a, in a, in a, in a, in a police cell, yeah? And you've just done something really, really bad, like an armed robbery, or, or GBH, attempted murder, and all that sort of thing, yeah? Section 18s. All Section 18s are, 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 real, are all big trouble. They're all attempted murder, you know, them sort of sentences, them sort of charges. And you're sitting there, and you've got the old Bill Kit coming, you want to talk to you, just, nah, mate, go away. No, you really shouldn't even say a word to him, you know what I mean? And you're sitting there thinking, hold up, I've been here before, you know what I mean? And you're sitting in that cell you're going, all the echoes, all the echoes you can hear, you know what I mean? And you think, God, oh, I've got all this again. All this again, just get your mouth shut, mate. Let's get out of this, mate. We've got to get out of this. We don't want to stay, be in here for 7, 10, 12, 15, 20 years. We've got to get out of this, mate. Keep your mouth shut, don't say nothing. Just get in there. Just get in, in that prison and just shut it. All of a sudden they come and they want to talk to you. No, nothing. Put the fucking cloth around your face, T-shirt around your face, over your eyes. Don't even talk to them. In the morning, door opens up. One of all that charge shit, they're going to charge you this, charge you that. We'll do what you got to do, yeah? From how do you play? Piss off, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Anyway, put you in a van or in the evening in a car, the alarm going. That's what oh, so fascinates me, you know, when you're sitting in, when you're sitting in the car, yeah? And uh, the old police car and the old alarm is going, the old, oh, yeah, the old alarm is going, and you're sitting in the back, you're looking at it, yeah, yeah, listen, I'm not a bit important there, yeah, you are, aren't you? You're going to get plenty of burp, mate. <laughs> you know that, don't you? And you go to court, you go to court, the magistrates, you know what I mean, get all that crap, you know, all the, been all that, all that crap before. Yes, yes, no, yes, get your name. I don't say a word, mate, nothing. Just get me downstairs, take me to where I've got to go to. They, they want to call you back up, you don't want to talk to them. What about bow apps and all that crap? See you later. Down the stairs, you know you ain't going to get bow. What's the point? See you later. Go down the stairs. Crash, get in a motor. Don't even wait for a van. They take you just straight to the scrubs, mate, or to Wandsworth or Brixton. This time, particular time, they're taking you to Brixton. Taking you to Brixton in mind. Oh, what? You go there, mate. You think, oh, here we go. All of a sudden, you get to the gate. One accepts you in. You're not, you, 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 one accepts you too many in. Then you got to go, and you got to go all the way to Wandsworth, yeah? It's not round, it's only around the corner ones. You go to the exception, you go in ones of go for the exception, bump, bump, bump in there. You've got to go for all that rigmarole again, all that shouting, screaming, name, number, and who do they think they are? <laughs> you know what I mean? Who do they think they are, mate? It's what makes you laugh, you know what I mean? You get in there, you get in there, you've got your geezer, you've got your screws in there, you boot and they jump a mile, run a mile, and then the old bully baits this. Caps down to there in them days, yeah, caps right over the noses. All military, ex, ex-military ex MPs, yeah? All bully baits, all they want to do really, mate, is um, put you in prison, you know what I mean? For the rest of your life, you know? That's what they want to do. They don't want you to come out of ones of mate, they want to keep you in there. Anyway, you go on the wing, they put you in a cell, right? And you right, listen. When I first went away, Right, in ones of, I know I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. But when I first went away, the cells in ones of, mate, was unbelievable. Free, four handed, nothing in there but a chair, table, and all that sort of stuff, yeah. You go in there, the geese are smoking like a trooper, you don't smoke, the windows are closed. You're thinking, fucking, what's going on now? This is, this is it. You know what I mean? How long am I going to be here for? You know what I mean? You've got the top bunk, they're farting down the stairs, it's, it's travelling up, stinking smell. You know what? Do you know the only good thing about getting the top bunk is because if you're in a bottom bunk and someone has got a weak bladder, it's going to come through the mattress, because weight mattress the foam, yeah? going to come through the foam and go into your, into, into your bed below, yeah? And, come on, I've had it once, yeah? With someone's weed at night and it's come through the sponge and gone into, your, and gone into your, 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 where you're sleeping. You want to kill them, mate. You want to kill them, you pull them out of bed, you want to kill them. 
Do you know what I mean? There's nothing worse than that. And don't forget, you ain't been in that cell too long. You might have been in that cell a couple of days, and that happens. And you're thinking, what the f What's going on? What's going on here? You know what I mean? And you want to get out of that cell. You've got to get out of that cell. You can see the screw. Listen, Governor, get a job. Any job, mate. Any job. What do you want, job? Cleaner? It's governor, that'll do me. If I've got to stay in the same cell, no, you've got to move up to the twos or whatever it'll be. Usually the ones. Governor, do me a right favour, mate. I'll work hard, I promise you. I won't cause no problems. Just get me out of that cell. Go in another cell. You're two up now. You're two up with another cleaner. And you think, oh, thank God for that, yeah? You're up there in the morning. You have a wash, have a shave, do what you got to do. Crash. Out you get. Go to the hot plate, because usually cleaners do the hot plate as well. You know what I mean? So you're doing the hot plate, but you get the shitty job, giving out the bread, giving out the tea, or something like that, yeah? Or you are just a cleaner. You know what I mean? You clean the shit houses, don't you? And don't you really on the hot plate? You know what I mean? I used to clean the ones. So they had me in the hot plate, they had me giving the tea, giving the tea out. Put a, a mug of tea in there, giving it him, book, giving it him. And uh, monotonous job. Don't forget, you're a proper arm robber. You're used to getting plenty of money. You're not used to this, is unbelievable. And the smell, the smell, the smell, the tea smell is unbelievable. <laughs> and people want to drink it. And it's like the worst colour you could possibly have. But people drink it, they come back for more. You know what I mean? They might come back with two or three cups to put in their cell over the pipe at the back was hot. But it ain't hot, but it keeps the tea a bit warm, yeah? And you drink that, it's um, and it's, pff, mate, it's unbelievable. When you get people in there that drink that all day long, their teeth are fucking black. You know what I mean? Honestly, the teeth are rotten. You give them the sausages, and that's it, you know what I mean? And then bang up, bang up. Do you know what? All the sausages I see in Wandsworth and the Scrubs, they never had no skins on them. <laughs> they never had no skins on them. That's all circumcised, mate. All the sausages in there were circumcised sausages, I swear. Never ever see a sausage in there. Never. Only sausage meat. Never ever see a sausage. Tomatoes. Listen, mate. The worst taste in the world. Everything in there. Everything in prison is the worst taste in the world. But the only thing is, yeah, if you work in the kitchen and you see the food as it comes out, comes off the hot plate, comes out the ovens, comes out the coppers, or wherever it comes out, the food is quite edible. It's quite nice as it happens. But as soon as it goes in the hot plate for two or three hours, that's what it goes in there for before it goes out the wing. And then when it goes out the wing, it goes in the hot plate. You know what I mean? So you can imagine there's no nothing there, it's gone. All the flavours being took right out of the food. It is what it is. Potato, and that's the word. There's no flavour in it. Carrot, there's no flavour in a carrot. There's flavour in nothing that you have. Right? And you think, after a while, the food, you think, oh, I can't wait for that. Do you know what I also like? The duff. I also like the duff, yeah. The duff's and custard. I also love that, mate. But the only thing is duff and custard. Duff, duff and custard. It does the does the waste. The only good thing about it, you're on the work, you're on the uh, you're on the cleaners, and you're mopping the landing, and you've got these great big mops here. But but I've got to say it, in them days, in them days before, I should really go back to that. Really, you should do it on your hands and knees. You have to get if and you put a little bit of cloth on the floor, and you kneel on the fl on, on the floor. You wet the floor. You've got your, so your scrubbing brush, you put your soap in a scrubbing brush and you're scrubbing it. You're doing two, three squares at a time. You might have to do, what, 400 squares, 500 squares, and you're doing two or three squares at a time. You're scrubbing it. <laughs> I'm joking. You're scrubbing it. You're putting the cloth in the water. You rinse it out. You go over the soap. You do it two or three times. Take the soap, bump, move down, do the next three. Someone's next to you, he's doing three, and now it goes on and on and on. Once all that's done, it's dinner time. That's how long it takes, it's dinner time, yeah? And you've been on that floor for three, four hours, but might have an hour of exercise, yeah? Let me tell you this, this is, let me tell you what happens, is that, right? 
Then you go, that's all done. Bang up. Couple of hours sleep, yeah? That's what people don't realise, yeah? That when you have a sleep in, in, in prison, you're not really sleeping. You're astral projection. You're astral projecting. You're going somewhere else, yeah? You're going somewhere else, and that was before you know where you are. Astral projection. Check it out. I've always said it before. You astral project. Well, I did. A lot of people do, but don't realise they do. Because when you're in, 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 in a cell, you lay down, right? You lay down in the cell, and, you're, and you sort of like, before you know where you are, the door's opened up, and there's two hours, three hours. Where's that three hours gone? Where's it gone? You're having a sleep, or you just shut your eyes. But you've not shut your eyes. You've gone somewhere, mate. You've gone somewhere else. And do you know a guy that I liked in prison? People must know this guy, Billy Gentry. I met Bill, Billy Gentry, mate. Proper, proper, proper gangster. Billy Gentry. But a lot of people would know him. And this geezer didn't muck about, mate. He was a well-known gangster, mate. Well-known. And I liked Bill. Bill liked me. Bill liked me because I, I was to fight, mate. I was to fight. And I was, wasn't afraid of anybody in there in Wandsworth. Another geezer called Barry Murphy. Anybody know Barry Murphy from, from Paddington? Yeah, Barry Murphy. Anyone know him? Yeah, I used to like Barry. Paul McDermott. Paul McDermott, I used to like Paul. Nice fella. There's a few people I met in there, in, um, in Wandsworth. Ben Najumi, I met him in there. Uh, the, got Nick with the Harris. Uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of names. Uh, me and Billy Williams. Look, I mean, when you think about it, the people you meet, I mean, they've got so many names, you know, like, the old man Fraser, a Fraser, Fraser is usually kept right, from another part of the, of, of the wing, another part somewhere else, you know, and so if you keep an eye on him, pain in the butt, he was a fat, fat Frank, but um, it, I mean, Frank was a little man, mate, but he was a dangerous, dangerous man. He couldn't fight, he was just dangerous, you know what I mean? The screws were petrified of him because you never knew how he returned. And so they give him a single cell. And I remember Frank, and it, listen, he'd done the same thing in Wandsworth, right? 10 years later, 10 years before, than what he'd done 10 years later when I met him. He'd go in a, he'd go in, and the cell would be spotless. He'd scrub it all day. Scrub, scrub, scrub. All he'd have in that cell was a bare necessities, yeah? that's in that cell. Well, we've all got that in Wandsworth then. You, you ain't, no one's got any different. Everybody's flying about for a bit, bit of cloth, something like that, a tea cloth, put on the top, make it look a bit homely, but you've got no chance, you know what I mean? It stinks. The worst smells in the world. Do you know the worst smells in the world? <laughs> I woke up one morning, I was on the ones, and I went, oh my God, what's happened? My cell, was flooded, but it was flooded with piss and poo. What happens? The the the, the sewers are burst in burst, and the whole ones and the twos and all the toilets, not toilets, uh, the the uh, the slop out bit things were all overflowing with poo. Yeah, all overflowing with poo, and the toilets that you used if you're lucky. Yeah all over flying with poo. So all the poo was going from the twos and ones down to the basement, yeah? And I was on the basement. Mate, the smell. And the thing is, when the sewer breaks in Wandsworth, it goes, it comes through the graveyard. So it makes it even more worse that they've got to get some paperwork to get people in there to do the sewer because of the graves in there, yeah? So you've got two or three days of all that poo in there. So what's your job? Your job is squeezing all that poo up, squeezing it all up, getting a shovel and putting it all in a bucket and then chucking it away. Mate, and they used to have these big bins outside, you used to go outside and throw it into these bins. Mate, if you ain't, <laughs> if you <I'm> go joking. <laughs> ah, it's to make me laugh. And you can always see what people were eating sweet corns and all that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, I hated it, mate. But when it went, it went. You know what I mean? It just burst open. And uh, I met some really nice people. I mean, people, best people ever. 
you could never meet uh, in prison. I mean, come on. I mean, you never see, you never ever see these people again, unless you're like me and you're in that circle, yeah. You know what I mean? And you never see, you think, who's that? Who's that? Do you know what I mean? And you want to shake his hands and talk to him about all the gangsters he's done in his life, yeah. I had that later on in my life, yeah. But it gets really exciting, do you know what I mean, to meet people like Billy Gentry, Frankie Fraser, Barry Murphy, I like Bow, Paul McDermott, you know, and my pals, all people that I really liked. Frank, I met back in the Chelsea prison, and uh, I told you about that, but it's all, I mean, it's all stories and story goes on and on and on. You know, um, Billy Williams, me and Bill, good pals, me and Bill. And uh, no one was safe around me and Bill. <laughs> no, no one was safe around me and Bill, Billy Williams. We didn't muck about, especially if he was a paedophile. And uh, he was in plenty of trouble, you know. Um, and then you go to your main, you go to your main prison. And you, or you go to court, you know what I mean? And you go to court and you think, oh, what's going on? And you go in court and you come out with a sentence of seven years or something like that, yeah? eight years or nine years or 20 years or whatever it is and when you get a big bit of bird mate and you come back to that wing and you come back to that wing and they put you in a different cell there's murders <laughs> there's murders because what they usually do if you've got a week two weeks trial they keep that cell for you the same cell yeah but now and again you get a really hard horrible screw hates you, that really hates you, yeah? And he can't wait to piss you off. And what does he do? Moves you to another cell. Oh, sorry, but we moved this guy in your cell, but you can move back there after your case. You're going mad. You're looking at getting maybe 15, 21 years, 20 years or whatever it is, yeah? <laughs> and this guy, and this guy, screw yeah, he's upsetting you straight away. So. I think it's the worst thing in the world to upset someone who's going to get 20 odd years or seven years or nine years or 12, what he's going to get, yeah? And these screws do it deliberately to wind you up. I've seen people come back from court and spark out screws. I swear. <laughs> come back and got a big sentence. You get a lot of these people, right? They go, you talk to them, everyone's all the same. You got what, in them days, 10 bags, 10 potato sacks for the depositions, yeah? For the depths, for the depositions, it's a joke. You know what I mean? And you've got to go through all them to read what, back your case, what the old bill got on you, what they ain't got on you. And when you go to court, they chuck in something else on you. So it's unbelievable what they, what they do to you. They drive, they get more verbal than you could ever imagine. In them days, in them days, you had a thing called verbal, yeah? Where you had two or three police officers get in the charge room, the, the charge fucking thing with you, put you on tape recorder, talking to you. You got one in there, he's just listening to the way you talk. He's listening and he's picking out things from your talk. And all of a sudden, before you know where you are, them big time Charlie Retators, Old Bill, I've got a thing called verbal on you, yeah? Where they've got maybe a book full of verbal. What you're supposed to have said on the journey from there to there to there to there. And you ain't said a word. It's only what they've picked up on you when you've been talking. Them days. They can't do it today because you've got tapes, it's a little, lot, lot different. But if they could get away with it, they would. Believe me, if they can get away with it today, they'd do the same thing. Verbal, in my days, was a thing. Armed robbery, in my days, was a thing. Drugs, wasn't known. Paedophilia, wasn't known. Bashing up women, was known, because a lot of them people used to do that. But anything like paedophilia, and all them sort of things wasn't known. You know what I mean? Armed robbery was the thing. 
Arm robbery was the thing. Drugs, no, no. Arm robbery. Proper, proper, proper men in them days, mate. Proper men in them days. Armed robberies, mate. Jump out of a motor. Okay, you got guns. You got masks on. Try it. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Do you know what I mean? Running in somewhere, putting them on the floor. Got guns, and you can never know when they're going to come in. you come in through that door, mate, and put put one in you. Because them old Bill, them days, they were the worst old Bill game. Wobby squad, serious crime squad, bad, mate. They'd fit you up in two seconds. There was a thing called, what was it called? I forget the name of it now. Um, Agent Provocateur. Agent Provocateur, yeah. Where they knew, they knew about a robbery was going to go off. And they let it go off. And then they want to nick you. So it was a thing called Asian Provocateur. Why didn't they stop you before that robbery? If they knew that they could. It's called, I, I'm sure, I definitely think it's called Asian Provocateur. I'm not quite sure. But check it out, yeah? And quite a few people got off of that because the old Bill fitted them up. Set them up, mate. Was sitting there waiting around the corner if you used to do the wrong robbery, rather than stop it there and then, they'd wait until you did it, and then they'd nick you. Agent Provocateur, I think it was called. And you used to get there. I've seen, I see, with a mate of mine, we're going through Barnes, all right? Barnes had a big squad there, serious armed robbery squad, serious crime squad, yeah? Robbery Barnes, yeah? Proper, proper squad, mate. Old, armed old Bill. Dangerous, dangerous arm the bill. That all they wanted to do was put one in you and nick all your money. I see them jump out of a car, all right, in Barnes High Street, in a supermarket, jump out of the car, making out those arm robbers. Like kids. And yet, they're nicking you for doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it didn't, obviously I didn't go and take it and nick the money, it was just making it look good, you know what I mean? Like big time slide potatoes at the hour, yeah? But they also fit people up, mate. Eyes are winking, 24-7. They fit you up. It'd be nothing to them. It'd be nothing to them fit you up in them days. Verbal, plenty of verbal. Everybody had it, mate. If you speak to anybody in them days, in the 65, 70s, 80s, not so much 90s, but it's six, seven, six and 60s, 70s, and maybe the beginning of the 80s, yeah? They used to fit you up, eyes are winking, a thing called verbal. They would verbal you like a gun out of fashion. And when you get in your, in your, in your wing with all your co-defendants, maybe 10 co-defendants, arm robbers, five co-defendants, and you start getting sacks, sacks, or depositions come in, and you think, hold up, he's grasped us up. It's what they used to do, mate. They used to do it. The eyes are winking, that is their thing. Verbal was one of their things, they was mustered it, and they called problems, and it called more problems. It called more problems. When you get to court, you're all grasping yourself up for no reason. It gets like, it's good, but you've got little firm, like the Wembley mob, look at the Wembley mob. Jimmy Wilkinson, Bertie Smalls, all that little firm, Mickey Green, Dave Delaney, Billy Sherval, all that little firm from the Wembley lot, and I think there's a few more. All that little Brian Turner, all that little firm, mate. Look at that happened to them. They fit them up while I was winking. And who was the first one to grass up? I don't know, someone told me it was Jimmy Wilkinson, I don't know. I can't see Jimmy Wilkinson doing it. He was a fucking dangerous, dangerous, dangerous man. Um, he was really dangerous, Jimmy Wilkinson. I mean, you wouldn't safe run him, mate. He said the wrong thing, he put one in you. He was a dangerous man. But there's a lot of, ver lot of things that, that, that are said about him, and that could be the verbal, again. But then Bertie Smalls was one of the first ones to do all the grassing. Look at him there, mate. He grassed everybody up there. Yeah? And I was away with Dave Delaney. Uh, I met Brian Turner, Billy Sherville, all that lot in uh, Brixton. 
in the, in, in the, in, in the eye category unit. They put me in there when I was done for attempted murder. They put me in there with that lot. Uh, Sam McCarthy, uh, Brian Fellers. There's a lot in there. I met a lot of people in that, in that, in that unit, yeah? But gangsters, proper, proper nasty people, mate. People that have had two, three, four underground every time they were in the bank. Mustard. Mustard. They were the ones that caused the banks to have a screen, bulletproof screen, right up to the ceiling. They were the ones. Because they used to jump over the other screens or smash it with a sledgehammer and go over and nick all the money out of the tills. But they wanted the money in, the, in, the, in that box downstairs, in that big safe downstairs that was more, more like the open. You know what I mean? And they'd go down in there and take the money out there and make two, three, four hundred grand. Proper, proper soldiers, mate. Proper soldiers. People that you wouldn't want to muck about with. People that I used to see. Do you know what I mean? Proper men. And I mean, when you're a child, not a child, when you're a kid, 17, 18, and you see all that lot, you've been away with that lot, you've, you know, all of a sudden you become that gangster, mate. You become that man. You become that dangerous, dangerous person that they're all talking about. Honestly, you know what I mean? And you're getting your big bits of birds. You're getting your verbal. People you're working with are getting verbal. And it goes on and on and on them days. Listen, I ain't gonna keep going on because I've had a workout, I'm soaking wet underneath. This is Ray Bain Mangill. Please like and subscribe. And thanks very much for listening to my podcast. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Press the like button and subscribe. Thanks very much, have a nice day. And tomorrow, is a different day. Take care, bye-bye.